Hi ladies, welcome, welcome. It is 8 o'clock Central Daylight Time. Dallas, Texas. We are here. Welcome, welcome. Today is June 30th, 2014. Everybody here? Everybody's here. It's actually officially summertime as of last week. It's officially summertime. The heat index here in Dallas is 95, I think. Right? Is it? 95. Yeah, some of you are not as warm as we are, but I, I love this warm. It could be this way all year round, and I'd be happy. <laughs> but, you know, I think I'm in the minority. But um, we are excited to be here. And, you know, as I was getting ready for this webcast and sewing all these clothes, and, you know, I'm making them fit me, I'm thinking to myself, okay, like, what's wrong with this picture? I'm making new clothes for me for the summer. And I am getting to share it with you all, but I get all the new clothes. So after the webcast is over, I have all these new dresses, and I'm really excited to have all of them. So it's a good push because sometimes we just don't sit down and do things like this. So I'm, I'm really excited about tonight. I want to give you some really good, easy ideas of hopefully some fun dresses you can make up quickly. And, you know, I shopped a lot. Anyway, I'll talk about that. Um, but in our tradition, we're going to stop chatting now, and we're going to just ask, answer questions. Ask and answer questions. You know, we have so many new people each week, every single week, because of the whole PBS thing that are finding out about us. So hopefully, if you're new, welcome, welcome. If you're old, welcome, welcome. You know, we um, are happy to have all of you. All right, so questions and answers, we'll be happy to ask and answer them. The new patterns will probably be out mid-August, probably mid, um, you know, I, I think the pre-sale takes place, I want to say August 1st, I think the pre-sale begins, and then we will um, ship the, and we just do that as a tradition, it really just gives you all a break in price, um, we, again, it's just a tradition for us. And then we'll probably ship them the beginning of September. I think Labor Day is traditionally when we ship them now. Okay? We're not looking to fall, are we? No, 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 no. This is still summer. There's lots of sewing still to be done. Don't go to fall yet. Even though the stores are, but don't go to fall. When will the pant fitting two and sew knits with ease be back soon? The webcast. Oh, those webcasts are not gone. I mean, They've been re they were replaced. They are gone, but they've been replaced with later titles. So probably, you know what we should do, Brett, is we should just take those off. Because I actually get that question a lot in emails. People are wondering where it is. What we did is because those were so old and they were, um, you know, not as good as these webcasts, we just don't have them up anymore. But before we took them down, we did a newer version of that same webcast. So you don't need those, and the information is just in a later date in a similar title. So they're, they're there. How can you take the one-piece sleeve and fit the two-piece sleeve? Um, how can you take the one-piece sleeve and fit the two-piece sleeve? How do you lay the pattern chain the, the pattern pieces to make the changes. Well, the one piece sleeve is literally one piece, but there is no fit to the one piece sleeve. Let's go back to L, C, and D for just a minute, which is our length, circumference, and depth. Uh, there's no length, sorry, whoops. There's no length when it comes to the one piece sleeve. There's no depth. There's only circumference. It's like a t shirt without a dart. It just, there's only circumference. So it will wrinkle. There are side effects of not having darts, et cetera, et cetera. When we go to the two-piece sleeve, the two-piece sleeve has two lengths. It's the top of the shoulder to the elbow, elbow to wrist. It has circumference, and it has depth because it has darting, and it's an angled sleeve, and, and it bends, and it bends the same way as the arm. So to take a one-piece to help you fit the two-piece, um, you know, it's kind of like, taken a t-shirt and compared it to a jacket you really you can compare circumferences but that's really all you can compare there's no 
lengths to the one piece and there's no depth to the one piece. Does that make sense? I hope I, I'm hoping that may all makes sense. I've had my sheet thread muslin complete in usable pattern form. Good girl. I now have my good girl. Can I use this as a base from which to make a muslin for a knit version? Sure. Um, yeah, when you go from on 4200 the sheath dress, when you have the woven down and you go to a knit, the only thing that's going to change is circumference. Um, lengths won't change, your bust point doesn't change, your waist doesn't change, your hip doesn't change when you go to a knit. Depth doesn't change. The only thing that changes is circumference. So all you have to do when you're going to a knit, I, I actually make it the same and then I just go back it depends on the knit and how stretchy the knit is and how close you want it fitted to your body, but I just go back and instead of maybe stitching three-eighths of a seam, I'll take a half-inch seam on each of those seams and it just snugs it in just slightly. Alright? But no, there's not a lot of changes to be made once you've got that woven 4200 down. Good girl. About the sleeve, I had to shorten my cap. Um, what? Where are we? What cap? Oh, oh! you shouldn't have to change a cap from a one-piece to a two-piece. I mean, the cap would be, the only reason you would go in and change a cap would be if it had to do have a shoulder pad, if you're trying to add in a shoulder pad. But as far as from going from one-piece to sleeve to a two-piece sleeve, there's nothing inherent just simply from going from one to another that would have any change to the cap. It wouldn't be a, a default or an automatic at all. There could be circumstances where you would change the cap, but not simply going from a one-piece sleeve to a two-piece sleeve. I hope we're communicating. If not, keep asking those questions. We'll keep answering until you get what you want. Um, cute top. Oh, thanks. What pattern is it? This is actually the, um, <clears throat> it's 195. This is the one we did a couple webcasts ago, the lace. Oh, we did lace. It was laces. Yeah, the lace webcast. We made this one. It was a version of 195 that we did. And then I've got it on over the dress. The dress is um, Shelly's dress, 4014. Thanks. And we're not doing Sh Shelly's dress tonight. I don't really have it in anything. I've got too many other dresses um, that I didn't highlight or change that dress. The ones that, that I've really highlighted tonight, we're not there yet, but are the 4000, the 4013, which is Vince's dress, the swing dress, and then the wraparound dress, both of those. And I've did some others. I mean, I made a lot of summer dresses. I've got one, two, three, four, I don't know, I've got ten dresses back here that I made. That's what I said. I have a whole new, i got two weeks worth of clothes here. It's really fun. And it's some cute stuff. Well, I won't say that anyway. Let's go on with questions. Are we okay? Well, no, we'll talk about the patterns once we get. I hate to shortcut those questions and answers because I really think these questions and answers are, are really important. But I will say you guys are really, really, really getting smart. You're just, it's so exciting to watch how smart you're getting. Um, so if I want to put a shoulder pad into 909, I can do this by raising the cap line and raising the shoulder angle. Okay, that's assuming that the yes, I mean yes, the answer is yes, except that there's an assumption there that the shoulder pad or the angle of the shoulder is correct and fits you because it's possible that if you're more sloped than what the jacket is already you could put a shoulder pad in there without making any changes to make it correct so sometimes if the pattern doesn't match our body even though it's not intended for a shoulder pad we could put a shoulder pad in there to make it correct but assuming it's correct, it fits like it should, and it's the right angle, and it matches you. Now, if you want to go in and add a shoulder pad, yes. You would raise up the angle of the shoulder, and you would raise the cap height the same amount, and that would be a match, okay? It's always those little assuming things. I hate to assume that we're not asking or that we are asking. All right, so I want you guys, if you haven't, you've got to go to Fit to Stitch website. We've got our new website up. Brett put countless hours in on it, uh, so did other people, a lot of people put countless hours in on it, but um, fittostitch.com, you know, you go to there and the music starts playing and it's so nice, it's really, really nice, but even if you haven't been there for a while, just kind of navigate your way around and all that kind of fun stuff, but we've been working on it for, I hate to say, six months, it shouldn't have taken us this long, but, you know, with everything else going on, it takes a while longer, but anyway my thanks to Brett 
because he did a fabulous job. Um, all right, sorry. Okay, go ahead. How do you adjust for a fleshy shoulder? Fleshy? What does that mean? The only kind of shoulders you can have is, is just really a straight shoulder, which is more square shouldered, or just, you know, we call them maybe slope. The shoulder, all that shoulder seam can do is, is just become um, more angled. Let me see if I have a shoulder thing here. You know, all it can do is just go, it's just a straight angle line. So it can just come up at the edge of the armhole or it can go down. That's all it can do. Fleshy, it sounds like maybe you mean fat or a lot of flesh on it or whatever. Yeah, that would, that would not make a difference in the shoulder angle, it, it probably at all. I mean, the shoulder angle is more generic. I mean, genetic, not generic, sorry, genetic. So usually our shoulder angles you know they change with age we become round shouldered if we let that happen or you know it happens but anyway so it shouldn't change for fleshy what about the two inches of ease for a jacket though that's a really sad um, standard that's somehow been put out there I'm not sure how it got out there so successfully but it did two inches means nothing it means absolutely nothing so you know I'm sorry to say, but it means nothing. <laughs> and he, really, here's why. I'll give you a little bit of logic. We got a little bit of time here. I'll give you some logic. Um, if you have, and I've used this analogy many, many times, but let's say you have three women and they're all of 40 bust. And one is 20 years old. Well, we don't even need three. We'll just have two. One is 20 years old and one's 60 year old. Now, the 20 year old and the 60 year old both have a 40 inch bust. You're going to tell me that the 20 year old is going to wear two inches of ease on that bust and you're going to tell me that the 60 year old is going to wear two inches of ease on that bust? Two inches is probably wrong for both of them. The 20 year old is going to wear zero inches of ease or maybe minus and the 60 year old is going to want five or six inches of ease on her bust. So you cannot, there are no, um, personality plays a role as to how we wear our clothing. Personality, age, um, religion, marriage, all those things, all the parts of our lifestyle, all play a part of our uh, how we wear our clothing and ease. So ease is not even close to being a standard. It can't be a standard. All right. So I hate to say if the sooner we get rid of that, the better off we'll be. Our standards are us. We need to measure our clothing versus our bust and the difference is what we like. And then we can, you know, just make a little list of what we like and that's the way to do it. Okay. All right. How do I change the sheath dress neckline to a boat neck neckline? All right, so definition number one is you've got to know what definition of a boat neck is. And definition of a boat neck is when the neckline exceeds, um, it's, a, it's actually raised at the center front, and it's a long horizontal neckline. Okay, so that means it actually comes up in the front which it would then you'd have to raise the neckline in the front and then you'd have to extend it out so you could do it but keep in mind you've got a princess seam and so if I were going to do it I would move that princess seam to where it wasn't going where it is uh, because I think it kind of collides into the boat neck I think it would kind of collide a boat neck is, is unstable in some cases because it's such a wide neckline that there's nothing to stabilize it so um, I would probably move the princess seam off into the armhole, to the upper portion of the armhole, so that the neckline wouldn't intercede. A boat neck and a princess seam is probably not a good marriage when that princess seam is going to the shoulder seam. So I'd move the princess seam off, somewhere off, and then go ahead and, and widen the neck edge. But the boat neck is where it's raised in the front, extended as wide as what you want to make it, and that's it. Has a facing. Okay. What should I consider when making a strapless top for a jumpsuit using 3100 for the pant base? Um, you know, we're going to talk about strapless tonight. We're going to talk about it in terms of dresses, uh, but but you can use it this right here. I mean, I guess it's not literally strapless, but I'll show you how to do strapless as well. We'll cover strapless. Strapless. If you're literally doing no straps, something's got to hold it up. So 
Let me uh, let me see that question again. Do you mind? What should I consider when making a strapless top for a jumpsuit using 3100 for the pant base? All right, let me go over this for a minute because you got a couple. You know, this is engineering issues. We're kind of engineering. We're, you know, sometimes in the design process, we come up with a great design. I've done it with my house, but then the engineering of it isn't going to work because the house isn't going to stand up, okay? <laughs> so the engineering of this question is that a jumpsuit is one piece, and therefore you have um, a lot of fabric that is relying to hang from the shoulders. Everything's coming from the shoulders when you've got a jumpsuit. Everything's hanging from the shoulders. If you make that strapless, uh, the chances are it will not stay up well because it's got a lot of fabric. So that means it, the circumference is going to have to be very small, tight, so that it doesn't drop. And even if it is tight, because the breast is compact, <laughs> the, the jumpsuit is probably going to fall. Now that doesn't mean it will fall off but it will probably weigh itself down because there's no there's nothing up here to kind of suspend it. So I'm not saying you can't do it, but I would do it in a very lightweight fabric. I would definitely do some type of casing at the waist so that the waist had some support as well. Um, and then you just have to make sure it's tight enough at the top that it doesn't pull down constantly. It's not fun to wear something that's constantly moving and shifting and you're constantly having to pull it back up. So, you know, maybe even consider some really small straps like these, and that would make a huge difference if you just had some, a really thin strap, because therefore there would, it would distribute the weight onto the top of the shoulders. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. All right, so um, let's move into spring dresses. We are going to talk a lot about all kinds of different dresses, all different ages. I'm, I always just because I think it's a good thing, I'm going to start off with the very easiest type of dress to make in my mind, just so you can, you know, find somewhere in tonight that you can find a place for you. And I know we've got all different levels of sewers and all different skill levels, but I tried really hard to pick up different skill levels so that everybody would have kind of something they could do. And as they watched it more, you know, we do these replays, they could come back and say, wow, I've done that, now I want to try this, now I want to try this, I want to move on up the line. In all of these cases, all of these ideas are things that I've seen in stores, um, things I've got in my closet, just somewhere along the line, just great ideas, okay? And again, my concept was summer. My criteria for dresses when I put on a dress in the summer is I want to wear minimal undergarments. I just don't want to put on a slip. Um, so if I have a fabric that's lightweight, I'll line it. And so we're going to talk about that. Um, just talking about fabrics that are, I prefer, um, not necessarily natural fabrics, but at least fabrics that are cool and give me, you know, uh, uh, easy care. Easy care. That's important too. So as I went through, as I go through these fabrics, if I forget to mention, they all went into the washer. They all went into the dryer. Um, before the process started, there wasn't, there's no dry cleaning to any of these, even the silks, everything's very low maintenance, okay, because again, summertime to me, we throw it on, it, we get hot and sweaty, it gets dirty, we throw it in the washer, we throw it in the dryer, it's clean and fresh again, and we start all over, so low maintenance was very important to me, okay, all right, so the first thing I'm going to start with is, I have shown it to you numerous times before, is just the tank dress, and the tank dress I did a couple different ways in this particular case. Literally, I take the tank top and I'm just going to add inches to the bottom, just add the same amount. The tank top is actually curved if you're using R500 tank top pattern. So when you use that pattern, literally uh, make the bottom square. So add uh, enough to the front and to the side that the bottom becomes square. You could curve it up at the bottom if you wanted to. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. But the tank top dress to me is really simple. You don't need to add a casing at the waistband. I do because I like a ca I like something coming in at the waist. Again, just keeping simple, um, you could put a belt on. So a tank dress is fabulous because you could take something like what I have on, this little top we made, the little sweater set, whatever, and just put it over it. Um, the tank top fits great, fits well, 
shouldn't have a lot of issues if you do you know the best thing you guys could do is take a photo and send it to me and I can tell you what's wrong um, these neckline edges are finished simply serging turning and top stitching it's a knit you do not have to have a serger you do not have to serge and, and flip you can flip this in without any serging and it will not ravel it will not give you a problem so this little tank dress I think is a dynamo um, anytime you're extending the bottom down just measure the circumference of your hips divide by four and make sure that you're coming out to cover the width of your hips and then just curve right back into the waist so the side seam will just have a little bit of curve to it wide enough to go through the hips and then of course curving back into the waist all right easy enough now as we go if you have questions let me know all right so then I took the tank top and I know you've seen this before also in this particular case now um, literally I just took the tank top pattern and cut it down the side so I decided I wanted my side to be four inches so it's two inches front two inches back and this is a great vertical look it's a great vertical look and of course I added just a little bit at the bottom to kind of tie it all in together black little belt black little sweater on top of it and it's a great look same fit completely different look but again this time when you um, go through the dart do not close up the dart literally cut the dart add seam allowance on both sides because you're actually going to sew this piece on and then you stitch the dart so you just create literally um, as you deconstruct it you reconstruct it so the dart was already there and then you cut the seam line so then you sew the seam line before you sew the dart so just build it backwards and it, it's just really a lot of fun to do these little tank dresses they are extremely simple for the summer and gosh just I could wear one every day again it depends on your fabric ITY knits are fabulous for this the rayon knits etc etc okay if a pattern calls for shoulder pads but I don't want to put them in how does that change the arm sleeve hole um, on a arm sleeve hole if it's a, let's just say on the pattern it's a half inch shoulder pad now I'm assuming you know really this is the way silhouette patterns does it I really couldn't answer that for another pattern company because they may not do it the way I do it and, and I don't know I don't know that but for silhouette patterns if I could answer that if it calls for a half inch shoulder pad then the angle of that shoulder was popped up a half inch right here not at the neck base of the neck but over here and the cap height was raised a half an inch alright so that that cap height being raised covers both the front and the back and you raise the front and the back a half inch and that's to cover that shoulder pad going in so if it says that the shoulder pad is a half an inch then you bring down the point on the armhole here half an inch bring it back into the neck edge and you take a half inch off the top of the cap and, and that will marry back okay okay we're okay okay so again we're just gonna keep stepping it up and get a little more um, you know as we go on that's okay okay please explain the process of lengthening the tank to become a dress especially if you want to add elastic casing all right um, let me get um, can I get that um, I was gonna say I don't I don't have the pattern here but can you look over here just just hold on one second what, what, what are the patterns behind there I see that one. Oh, there it is right there let me have that one please this is not uh, the tank but it's Anne's top and it's the same concept thank you Brett okay so what you're gonna do here is this is the this is Ann's top it's pattern number 115 but I did it back here as well and I'm gonna show you how to do that also so in this case um, I wanted to add 10 inches so from the very bottom I drew this down 10 inches and once I drew this down I drew a rectangle at the bottom just make it a rectangle at the bottom I don't care what's going on in here make it a rectangle at the bottom 
So I drew it down 10 inches, I drew it over, and then as far as how far out I drew it, I my hips are 40, so I wanted my dress to be 42, which is which is 10 and a half inches on each piece. So 10 and a half plus a seam allowance, 11. I came out 11, I came back up the 11, and then brought it right back into this French dart area and continued with the up part of the pattern. Easy enough? Please go back over the hip measurement, divide by four, and curve into waist. What does dividing by four do? Well, you're dividing by four because you've got um, a front that's on the fold, so that's there's four pieces, two fronts, two backs. So I take my hip measurement, divide by four, because half of it's in the front, half of it's in the back, but half of the front is, is a quarter. So there's actually four pieces that I'm dealing with. Okay. Can you please tell us this type, knit, woven, a fabric you use for the tank dress and all future dresses? Fabric doesn't matter. doesn't make a difference. It, the, in, in every case, when I'm doing a dress for myself, I don't ever want a dress to silhouette my body. I'm 56 years old and I'm not interested in silhouetting my body. I want ease at my hip line and my ease, I usually build in two or three inches of ease at the hip line. So I don't care if it's knit, woven, the type of fabric's not going to make a difference. Right, but, but good question. All right? Okay, so does that help to where you can see that? Perfect. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to go to the wraparound dress. Now this is one of the dresses I featured on the, um, on the dress special. The reason I did it is because it's fabulously easy. It's just it's wonderful. It's so cute. I have a, a brand new fabric I put online. It's a black cotton knit. It's perfect for summertime. I bought it specifically for summer, summer dresses, leggings. There's two-way stretch. It's a nice hand. It is not see-through. The black rayon is a little lighter weight. This is, has more body, more umph. It's not see-through at all. A black dress, I could put a black dress on every day of the week and a little summer cotton and it would look great no matter where I was going. People have a tendency to think you just are really dressed and look nice when in fact it's just really casual and easy. This wrap dress is a retro dress from the 70s. Um, it was called the, um, I don't remember, but it it's sold out so quickly, the dress did, that all production was stopped to print more to make more of these dresses so in this case what happens with this dress I'm going to kind of undo it here is the very simple little dress to make it's got a French dart the front wraps to the back then the back wraps around and meets in the front okay the sleeve is an option but either way the sleeve is only a half sleeve so in this case, I'm going to actually get that sleeve and I'm going to show you how I cut off the bottom because it became a cap. Yes, it's just right on that thing. I forgot to grab that sleeve. Um, go, to the next, go to the one behind there. We've got so many patterns and so many pattern changes, it was really hard to organize it, uh, the one that went down actually. I just put it on the outside so I could grab it. Okay, so this is the sleeve, and when you look at this sleeve, you can see it only sews from here to here. The actual sleeve doesn't, there's no underarm seam that it slows to. So the sleeve is just loose, and it just hangs. So when I did this, I, that's not what I wanted. I wanted a little cap, but I didn't want it to be as long as what this sleeve is. When you put the sleeve on, it's kind of like a little bell. Keep in mind, it only secures right about through here. But again, that's not what I wanted. So I went ahead and just cut a little cap. And so I cut the sleeve out just so that I would have the sleeve. And then here's what my version of it and how I made it. So what I did is, if you look at the middle here, I cut, and I'll hold it up so that you can see it. I cut six inches shorter in the center and then I literally just curled it out to those notches on each side so if you have the pattern start at the notch draw up six inches and then just curve it up to that middle the middle high part is six inches and then just fold it in half and duplicate it for the other side alright so doing that what it yielded me out 
was this real cute little short cap. And you can see it's higher in the middle. That's what I wanted. That's a six inches shorter than the sleeve. And then I just feathered it out to the notches in the front and in the back that's already on the sleeve. So very easy change to make, but I really like, or you could do sleeveless. Sleeveless is a really nice look. Also, I wanted a little bit of a cap. So I went ahead and added that, that cap in. Okay, then the other change I did is in the back here, there, the way this dress is, the pattern is, I mean, I just love this dress, and it is so cute on. It's unbelievable. I was thinking you could do the back a different color. You could do the back a print, and the front is solid, so that as it wrapped here, you'd have the print here, and then the back would be a print. Lots of fun things you could do with this dress. And again, such an easy level, and I'm going to show you how I made it really even easier. The front does have ties, and it wraps around to the back. Instead of those ties, what I did is I just went ahead and t put elastic from from where those ties would be so that when I get into the dress I actually go under here and that those elastic goes behind me. Now that gives me a much more confident feeling that, that those ties won't come untied while I'm wearing the dress. That's what I decided I, I wanted that. This dress has a little back yoke across here and then I put a little elastic into the back. Again when you have it on it kind of pulls it into your back and it's really, really flattering. So those are just some little adaptations. The elastic, all of those hints are in the pattern. I just um, wanted to kind of add those to you. Now what I did here, and you just can put any tie on the front that you want, or you could do, I mean you could do all kinds of different things. The whole entire dress is left raw. I didn't finish any of these edges. All of this is left raw. Now I just surged it and left it. That's why I said this dress is you know, your sewing skill level doesn't have to be fast, and you don't need a lot of time. You just need a great fabric that you love. It doesn't matter if it's knit or woven. It won't make a difference. This is a knit. It's a cotton knit. Um, I did finish the neck edge just to give it a little more finished look. I just turned it under and top stitch. But all of this is just unfinished. I just left it, and I, I think it looks great. I just love the dress. Okay, so very, again, very easy to do. You can see that you can throw that on. The black is heavy enough. I don't need any kind of slip underneath it. I can't see through it, but it, yet it's a cotton. And so it really gives me a great summer feel. All right, are we okay with that? All right, good. I'm going to move to, um, no, let's do, let's not do that just yet. I'm going to move to Anne's top, one, the one I just showed you, 115, because that neckline is a great neckline. So many people like it that I've used it over and over and over. Many of you have made that pattern, so all you're going to do is lengthen it, just exactly how I showed you to do. What prompted me to use it was I had seen a couple dresses. One was by Calvin Klein, and I actually duplicated that dress um, right here. Hold on just one second. I can't reach all these dresses with this earpiece on, so excuse me. All right, are we okay? This was the Calvin Klein uh, one that I did, that I saw, and the Calvin Klein dress was, oh my gosh, it was $150 for this little dress. So let me just kind of go show you what I did on this one, and it was the same. It was a striped gray and a solid gray. Gray and white, it was exactly the same. I looked at it and I thought, I've got those fabrics, and I've got that pattern, so I'm going home, and it took me, I don't know, not long to make it up. You would not have to do the contrasting. The, I put my elastic in the waist. You wouldn't have to do that if you didn't want to. Whenever you're designing and deciding what you want to do, I would strongly recommend that you watch your horizontals. So the contrast at the neckline is wonderful because you see it brings your eye right here. You might not want to do this because you can see that it brings the eye here as well. So you might want to just leave this off and let the attention be brought here. Now this is 115, so if you wanted to put a sleeve on it, you could. Again, I was thinking my wardrobe and what I wanted, and I would wear my little sweater set top with it, my little white. That's how I would go out in it. If it got hot, I could take that off. Because this is a rayon knit, rayon knit to me is just too sheer to do one layer in a dress. So this whole entire thing is double layer. So literally, I simply cut two layers at a time. And I sewed two layers at a time. 
So when you look in this, you would never know this dress is two layers, except when you literally start to pull it apart and realize that there's two layers. So I did the whole entire thing, two layers, two layers everywhere. Okay, that's just what I decided I wanted. Now, because I wanted this, again, I'm going by the Calvin Klein. I didn't, I wanted to not just to add to the bottom. You can see there's a little more flare in this one. So I decided I would use the yoga skirt. Okay. I think this dress is so cute. And it's just so nice on because it's so soft. And yet because of the double layers, it's got such a great hand to it. So literally I just cut out two whole dresses, sewed them all as one. And because it's kind of a, the, the knit, the knit, the knit stuck to itself, it was so easy. I thought, well, you know, maybe it'd be a problem somewhere, but it was really, really easy. So I'm going to show you this process as to show you this. On the runaway dress, in size two or three, will two yards work for the adaptations you show? Yes. Yes, it will. It will. Okay, I'm sorry. I need one more pattern over here. Um, I want to show you how what I did to this um, 115. That's the Calvin Klein back there. It's, it's mine now, but I mean it was the Calvin Klein. Not that one, that one right there. Just hand me that. Thanks. I was going to get these pattern pieces off and then I forgot. Okay, so what I did is I took the 115 and because I had made it before, I knew that my waist was three inches above where actually my waist was four inches above where the bottom of this blouse goes. But because I wanted blousing, I made it three inches. So that gave me an inch to have extra f extra fabric. Okay, got that? All right, so three inches of this blouse I want to cut away. I could turn it up, I could do whatever I wanted to, but three inches was the magic number. All right, then I came in with a yoga skirt. And the yoga skirt um, when I was at the store with the Calvin Klein, I measured the circumference at the bottom because I tried it on. I really liked the amount of flare. So I knew what it was. Um, I took the yoga skirt. This is cut on the fold. The yoga skirt's cut on the fold. And I put these two together. Now what I want you to notice is the yoga skirt um, is narrower. So I'm going to go out to the width of the top because I want a little extra there. In fact, I went out a little bit more because I want uh, fullness at the waist so that the elastic can come in and gather it. So I actually went out a little bit more. And I didn't want it as long as the yoga skirt, so you can see where I turned up. I turned up six inches. So you can see where I gingerly turned up six inches, and that became my pattern. So I cut around here, I went from here, I cut up to the side, and then followed the uh, 115 all the way around. That was it. I mean, you know, it's it's take, takes a little bit of thought, but it's still really, really simple to do and that's the dress I got. That's the dress I came up with. Cute, double layers, everything I wanted it to be. I can throw it on, I can put this little jacket on it, and it's just a really great, cool little summer dress. Um, the bias binding, uh, that's created just cutting. It doesn't have to be bias on a knit. Anytime you're dealing with a knit, you want to go the greatest way of stretch. So that does not have to be bias. The only reason I used bias was because I wanted the stripe, obviously, to be bias but it does not have to be biased when you're dealing with a knit. It has to be biased in a woven, but not in a knit. All right, and so then I just decided how wide it was, measured the neck edge, made it two inches smaller than the neck edge, sewed it in place. The seam allowance goes down, and then there's a top stitching below, and it all looks extremely professional. You always um, put a binding on the left shoulder seam, is where the seam of the binding and the shoulder seam, where they always align, is the left shoulder seam. Okay? All right, that's that one. That's the same one I have on. It's the 195 that was, we did the Nick and Zoe adaptation to it. I did a white one, I did a black one, I did several of them. So that's the same one. And I like it because I can wear it closed, I can wear it open. Um, and these rayon knits make great little tops like this. Yes. I sewed it as one piece of fabric. If you look inside, uh, there's only one, you know, the, the dart is sewn as one piece. Everything's sewn as one piece. The goal was, it wasn't really to have a lining. The goal was to really have a thicker fabric. 
So you could have sewn it as two different and joined it. It wouldn't have made a difference. I just thought it would kind of be easier to just sew it as one, and so I did. Could you cut the this dress, Calvin Klein, on the bias? Yeah, but there's, tell me your thinking. There's no reason to cut it on a bias. A knit, number one, a knit doesn't have a bias. Um, a bias is when you're 45 degrees to, a, a bi definition of bias is when you're at a 45 degree angle to the weft and the warp, to either the weft or the warp. There is no weft and a warp in a knit, so therefore you can't have a bias. So there's, I, I'm not sure why you're asking that or what you're thinking, but if you'll kind of tell me what you're thinking, then I'll answer your question. But it's not the bias. Does that make sense? Okay. Could you use a ponte knit for that dress? Or would an ITY be better? I think for this particular dress, there's a lot of fabrics that would work. I think a ponte would work. I think the ponte, notice the fullness here and how that fullness hangs down. I don't think the ponte would give this soft fullness. An ITY would, uh, but this is a really soft drape in this dress. And uh, I think a lighter weight, I think a ponte is a little bit heavier than what I would use for this. Not that it wouldn't work, I just think it's a little heavier. If you were doing this dress in a woven, um, and there's no reason you couldn't, because it's got a little extra at the bust, it's got a little extra at the hip, you could do a woven on that, but again, why would you want to cut it on a bias? Whenever you travel into bias territory, you're, tra you're, you're traveling into unstabil n you know, no stability land. And unless there's an advantage of the bias, which there would be none in this dress, there's no reason to go to that unstable land. There's no reason to. But again, if you tell me why you want to do bias, then you can tell me. Now, when you cut this skirt, if you look at the yoga skirt, the yoga skirt is meant for a knit. But if you cut it on a woven, you already have bias. You have bias. One of these seams is going to be on bias. Bias equals fullness. So if, if you put this on the straight of grain, if you're doing a woven, this will be biased and it will ripple. If you put the straight of grain down the middle, both of these are biased and you'll get rippling on both sides. So um, it really more depends on, I wouldn't change the pattern as much as I would change placement on the fashion fabric. And I'm assuming you would do that because you want to change up the, the way the skirt hangs. Is that a fair analogy? Is there a hem in the dress or just a raw edge? Did you hem the gray dress? I did hem the gray dress. And don't get me wrong, you guys, I love raw edges, but I don't know, for some reason um, I did hem it and I just surged the bottom, tucked under an inch and top stitched. And because I used a gray thread you can really hardly see it. An ITY knit is what's called interlock, interlock twisted yarn, ITY, and that simply means that the way the fabric is knitted, that if it snags and you cut the snag, nothing will unravel. In the old days of a knit, um, you'd cut uh, snag and the the fabric would ravel. You know, knits, nylons, think of nylons, you know, you'd get a run. But not so much in today's uh, knits. They don't ravel, they just simply uh, are knitted a little bit differently. But also that ITY inter interlock twisted yarn, it gives a great drape to it. It's a really nice fabric. This is an ITY. We'll get there in just a second. Alright, are we good? Okay. All right, so for, here's another one I'll just show you real quick. I really didn't do anything different with this except add trim to this. So this is still 115. Um, trim a little bit of that trim down the side and a trim around the neck really gives you a very vertical feel to this. Great dress. Same thing. It's the same thing. Um, as long as you've made that dress and you've got it all done, just cut another one. Make another one and, and get another look out of it by simply changing the fabric combinations. I think there were so many things, you know, I've sewn for many, many years, and even through this process, there were so many reasons I came up with of why women should sew. You know, we're able to make it the length we want. I mean, of the dresses and what I was doing, I'm able to exactly determine how long I want it. I can cover my ugly knees, and I can, you know, I can cover all those things that I want covered. I can make it exactly how I want it. I mean, it's so nice. It's so nice to be able to do all of that stuff. Okay, so this is pattern number uh, 4013. Absolutely love this dress. I mean, I, I was tempted to wear it tonight, and I thought, but if I wear it, you can't see it. So just love the dress. I, 
4013. It's called Vince's Dress. Um, on the front cover, it's stripes. I decided I didn't want stripes. I just wanted it all in one color. This is a beautiful red cotton that we have online as well. And I mean, it was just absolutely a joy to work with. I made it a couple weeks ago. I've even worn it. Just wonderful. But what I wanted is I just wanted the whole dress shorter. And what I decided is I wanted it um, four, three, nine inches shorter. I wanted it nine, no, 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 four, seven, yeah, it was nine inches. I made it nine inches shorter. So I want to just go through and show you that process because there's really um, the cuts and the, the dress. It's such a great dress. The original dress that Vince Camuto, it's a very pricey dress, but it just fits beautifully. So what I did is um, you have really, when you when you look at the dress, You'll kind of, and put it all together on the floor is what I did. I did the front and the back, and I put it all together on the floor. And when you see those pieces together, you'll see you really have four parts of the dress. The top part, and I don't know if you know this, so this is kind of why I'm telling you this. But every person, it's called the newscaster phenomenon. And every person from their bus point up, you can't, if a person is sitting down behind a news chair, you can't tell how tall or short they are. From our bus point to our top of our head, everyone around is equal, pretty close. So where we come in with differences of height are from our bust down to the floor. So do not change the top piece. You'll see the top piece is with all the French darts and all that. Don't change that. You're going to start with, and what I did is I just kind of laid these pieces out so that you could see that the pieces are going to go like this and then this one goes above that. This one's going to go like this. Nope, this one's going to go like this. Sorry about that. Okay, so what you're going to see, and, and all I'm trying to say to you, don't I don't want to make it too complex here, is this is the upper piece, this is the middle piece, and this is the lower piece. I took four inches off the bottom, three off the middle, two off the top. I'm going to call them one, two, three. Again, I'm, I'm disregarding that top piece. I don't want any changes going on through there because um, you'll kind of screw up the proportions. But the proportions stay really nicely if I go two, three, and four inches off each piece. On these bottom two pieces, because they come together, I took four inches off both of them, and all I did was come up off the bottom, whack off four inches, and I was good. In fact, I even cut them out like they were and then took the four inches off just kind of to make it easy. This became my middle piece. This was when I wanted three inches off, and so I took this nice tuck here. It does not matter where it is. Any place you're going to make it, you're going to have a little bit of a jag, and when you have that jag, you just go from this point here to this point down here, and you just do a continuous angled straight line. You're going to take off a little bit of this, you're going to add a little bit of here, but it's just an angled line, so it doesn't really matter how you change it. And usually when you do a tuck like this, now this tuck was an inch and a half wide, that's what took off the three inches, you'll see that it's jagged on one side and not on another. But even if it is, true up both sides. Now this was the top part, this is where I took off two inches, so you've got a nice one inch tuck. All of these pieces have a grain line, and where that grain line's going up or down, that's where I want to take the tuck, the perpendicular tuck to that grain line, because then I know I'm taking away length. So in this case, I took away two inches, I folded up an inch, that gave me my two inches, and again, notice I've got a jag here, and so I go from this point to this point, and I draw a continuous angle line, on this little jag over here, well, actually, I don't have one. So usually when you do this kind of stuff, you'll have um, a jag on one side and not on another. But it doesn't matter. You can clean them both up by taking the top point and the bottom part and just drawing a straight angle line. Okay? So that was it. Those are my three pieces of the front. I had three pieces of the back. Do the same thing. I shortened it. I got the look I wanted. This is kind of a maxi dress. So instead of a maxi dress, I made it a knee length dress. So if you're shorter, you could do a similar thing and it would be a great look. Okay, So all I did on that, I just wanted to show you, was I did it all out of one color and I shortened all the pieces so that you got a shorter look. The white piping, yes. Yes. Trim it, all of the trim is an applique with the exception of this right here. It's a fold over white elastic but I just left it flat here, and I just left it flat on the side seams and just stitched it on top after I did the seam. 
because the seam was my guide. And even if I was crooked, you couldn't tell because the seam's underneath. You can't tell it. But, but make the dress, put it on, fit it. I mean, I went ahead and did this part. Fit it, and then go ahead and you can add all your stuff once you get it to be the circumference you want it to be. Okay? Vince's dress, uh-huh. It, it, Vince's dress a maxi length anyway. Well, it's not all the way maxi, but it's long. When I made it, I had to cut nine inches off to make it knee length. Right, exactly, nine inches. So that's the nine inches that I was talking about. Even I have to cut off. So don't think it's because you're 5'3". It's just simply um, to take it from a longer length to a knee length, take your nine inches away. Nine inches is really easy to get rid of, though. That's why I say four from the bottom, three from that middle panel, and two from the top portion. But again, don't change that top. Okay? Okay. Is that all right? Okay, so now I want to go to um, the shirt dress. So because we're getting short on time, I'm going to talk quick, okay? And then just ask me. The classic shirt, shirt waist dresses are just really, really stylish right now. They've really made a big comeback. They were created in the 40s, but actually really got popular in the 50s. And everybody knows if you were around in the 50s, you had a shirt dress. It was simply a shirt cut long is really all it is, and that's exactly what I did to this. Um, because of the way the pattern is, it's real easy to change up these facings. And again, I would encourage you to create vertical, not horizontal. So don't accent the edges of the sleeve. That makes it horizontal. You know, when you, when you put a contrasting color on the edge of the sleeve here and here. This is the classic blouse pattern 600, and all I did was add the length. Now, the bottom of the blouse is uneven. I added the exact same length to everything because I wanted the bottom to be uneven because what you're seeing a lot right now is the classic shirt dress, which this is. And let me just make one comment. Under the belt, let me just take this belt off. And a lot of times it's worn without a belt. And I, I made it that I could wear it without a belt because what I did is I made, instead of darts, I made these little tucks and then I just stitched them down. And it's just so cute on. And I did that both in the front and the back. Again, instead of stitching darts, I just took and tucked the dart in and then stitched down. And it's a very nice look, especially this is the black silk that I have online. It's a four-ply silk. Threw it in the washer, threw it in the dryer. It came out beautiful. Um, just, I mean, just really a, a dream fabric to work with. But the contemporary version that I'm talking about that's really popular right now is what's called a high-low dress. So it's higher in the front and lower in the back. And that's what I did with this dress because I wanted that look. I wanted the contemporary shirt dress, but I wanted the lower back. So you can see I cut the back five inches lower than what the front is, but I had the meat at the side. So when I turn it around like this, and when you have it on, I, I really like it. Kind of, It almost looks like tails, like a black tuxedo with the tail back here but it's kind of below my knees, and then the front of the dress is, is knee length. So I just really like it. So when you're looking around and you can do shirt dresses, or 2014 summer shirt dresses, there's lots of them, and do images, you can see there's all kinds of current contemporary twist for this classic shirt dress. So again, this is just real easy to do. But, you know, you got to be able to sew the collar on and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But very, very fun dress to do. I really enjoyed doing it. Okay. How far did you stitch the tuck in the shirt dress? They're only one inch, one inch. Like, you know, the length of the pin. So once you, you put it in, and I would do it after I did it. I had it on. I closed up the tucks. Um, you know, I draped it on me, put a pin, and then I stitched them like one inch wide. Doesn't have to be that wide, but that's what I did. Okay, so I want to bring in this little dress because this was just a lot of fun. This is the swing dress. Okay, and this is the little, you know, sweater I've made, but I wanted to do the swing dress like this, and I'm going to show you what I did with it. Okay, so first off, this is a, um, a knit fabric. It's uh, black and white cotton, I don't remember, but it's, it's on the site. So swing dress, I cut it out just like the pattern. I didn't make any changes to it. I cut the whole thing out. I lengthened the dress. Be careful to measure the length because you want to make sure the length you want is long enough. But 
I didn't make any changes to it. Then, because I wanted this dress to just be a little T-straps, I started cutting away, and I'll show you what I cut away. Okay, here, for instance, is the front of the dress. So notice I cut down the neckline because I just wanted a curved front here. And then don't cut the armhole. Don't change the armhole. Where the armhole stays is good. And then I just want, I cut away the top part because I wanted this little strap instead. So it's important to measure how much you cut away. My total that I cut away was five inches from the front and three inches from the back because you're going to replace that with a strap and you need to know how long to make that strap. Now you could try it on and guesstimate it, but this is a little more exact and it's a little easy. I think it's easier. Okay, so again, this I just used a French curve for and I cut it, I cut it down three inches and then I took my curve and then I just redrew a nice little curved line like this. I did the same thing here and I just cut that away. Okay, easy enough. Now on the back, I wanted lace. So I wanted a cute little lace inlay. Let me show you the process I did on this. That's the front. I saved all these pieces so that I could show you how to do this. So notice here's the back here. Um, where's my, oh here we go. Okay, so again, here's my original armhole. And because I had cut off the neckline of the front, I did the same thing to the back. So I cut off, that's the shoulder seam, I cut into the neckline and just drew down there. This is all design. So if you're not sure what to do, cut a little bit away, um, put it on, cut a little bit more, you know, don't build Rome in a day, just kind of figure out what you want. Then I knew I wanted a lowered back, so I went ahead and cut, just literally cut off what I had. And then I used this for my pattern, and I cut that out of lace. Okay, so I took that away and cut away lace. This is a border print. I don't know if you can see all this. So I put the border print down across the bottom because this was going to be covered with this tape. Okay, so there's my pattern, and I've cut the dress, and I'm good to go. This is a single layer. Um, it's a really nice drape, no see-through, so I wasn't worried about that. Then I went and bought this. Um, this is your single-fold uh, bias tape and it's already folded for you it's very very easy to do and all I have to do is come in and literally I sewed it here first then I sewed it in the back on my lace and then you're gonna sew it around the armhole and that's it now that's where you have to know the exact length of how long you need it to be but keep in mind if I just what I did is because I wasn't exactly sure of the length is I started down here at the side seam, I sewed it up to here, I knew that was going to be okay. Then I left my eight inches because I had measured it and that's what I thought it was. And then I went ahead and just pinned this back portion and tried it on. And I did that on both sides, so I just um, sewed up to here and then stopped on both sides and then pinned this back portion, put it on, it was perfect. And then all I had to do was continue to stitch and that's it. It's such a great look but it's so easy to do. It's really, really easy to do. I can be bare if I want, or I can put my little sweater on and cover up a little bit more if I want to. And then I didn't gather the waist. I wanted to wear it with a belt, so I'll just leave it like this. Okay? Okay. All right. Then I want to get to this one because this is my, um, this is my halter dress. And I think this, is, again, is a great idea you could do a halter jumpsuit. All of these things give a little bit of support so that if you go to do strapless, you've got the, the whole garment has to hold, be held up by that circumference, and that's a lot. So just to have a little strap or a little halter is really a great way to do it. Um, let's switch this camera over just a little bit, can we? Because I want to go to the board and show you how to do this dress. All right, so this dress in particular is, um, we've got this fabric, and, and this, we had this fabric before, but this is a new coloration of this fabric, and I just really, really like it. It's a panel. This took two panels to do this. So what I did is, I wanted the panel on the back. This is actually the back. I didn't want his head on my chest, or, you know, I mean, <laughs> I want it on the back. So this is actually the front. 
and what I wanted it is to have just this nice long stripe and then I cut and, and turned the stripe another direction so that's the look I got. I can wear it with a belt, I can put a little thing again over it but this is what I wanted. Now this ITY is thin so um, and the reason I chose this is, is this particular pattern has a little bra thing inside of it. The pattern has a support bra on the inside. So it's got elastic under here and it's got another little section. Now what I want to show you with this is a term and I know it's, we're at 9 o'clock but I'll just talk quickly. It's called shadowing. So I needed another layer under here but I had to be careful because anything that I used you're going to be able to see through it. Same with the back, you're going to be able to see through this. So I've got this panel pinned up and I'll show you what I did is I, you cut the big piece out first. So this is actually my pattern piece and what it looked like. Because my panel wasn't long enough, that's when I decided to add the horizontal stripe so I could make the dress longer, but plus I loved the look, especially to the front. I think it really gave the front a, um, you know, not, I don't know, I, I love the play of the stripe by, by turning it the other direction. Now this is my inside bra, and this is the back. So what I did is I laid, I cut out the back and then I laid it on top of the fabric again with my pattern piece on top so that underneath here for my bra is the same exact placement on my fabric. So even if you get close and if you look underneath you'll see the exact same stripes in the exact same place underneath this or right here you'll see the umbrella, you'll see the head, exactly what's underneath here so there won't be any shadows showing through that white fabric but I still have my double layer. So it's called shadowing, it's used in shears, it's used in a lot of different things but when you're doing this fabric and you're trying to line it or you know prevent it from being so sheer this is a great way to do it. So again just take your fabric, lay, it, lay another layer of the fabric on top, line it up and then lay your, your bra piece on top and then just cut it out. Easy enough? and I love doing it. The other thing I did is I bought, um, sorry about that, I bought necklaces to make this. You can, you can go to Hobby Lobby, you can go to Michael's, these are just two necklaces and all I did was join them underneath here. One is not going to be long enough, two is probably going to be perfect, but if you buy one that can be adjusted, then you can make the adjustment under here and then throw them underneath here. So these make great little straps to do any kind of thing like this that you want to for your summer dresses. It's really light, but you have some strap, it holds it up, but it's not really, really heavy and fixed. All right, so we're out of time. The wrap dress, I did a couple wrap dresses. I'm going to show you those next time because our pattern of the month is the wrap dress. It's a great dress for summer. It is so popular right now. You know, I get a little nervous about fitting, so I want to go over that fitting with you next time, not next week, but two weeks, and then um, we'll go from there. But, but as we are here, any questions on all these dresses, you guys, again, see, look, at I've got one, two, three, four, five, I've got like 10 new dresses, and my criteria was every one of them, I wanted to love them. I didn't want to just get them done. I wanted to love them. So the double layers, the shadowing, each one of them, I just, they have features that I just, I'm so excited to wear them. So if you see me out and about in the next couple of weeks, I can assure you I'm going to have one of these dresses on. I'm just, I get so excited for the next day because I get to wear a new dress. All right, can I answer questions for you? The panel dress is 619. It's, it's the halter, but I just added inches to the bottom. And in this case, I added, I could only add six inches because you got to the bottom of the panel. And that's when I decided to do the horizontal because I could add an additional five inches. And I love the look, especially in the front because it's just straight in the front. So I love that look in the back, in the front. And then the back, it just carried on the whole horizontal look. It just changed up the thickness because the panel is only so long. And I, I wanted my dress to be a little bit longer. It's the difference from it being showing my whole entire knee to only showing a little bit of my knee and that difference was perfect for me. <laughs> no, no, because this, you can't see through this at all. So this was just sewn on here and then I just hemmed the bottom. So you don't need to worry about that on that. It's just where the, the especially when it's on your body, um, if you don't match it, you can see it 
and on a hanger here you might even not be able to see it but once it's on your body and there's a different print underneath but also if you do it solid white then it changes the color so I wanted to use the same fabric I just didn't want it to be seen so that's where that shadowing is wonderful to do that the halter is 619 it's called I think it's Jessica's halter 619 619 or yes 619 it's right here in front of me Jessica's favorite halter mm -hmm. it's got a built-in bra it's wonderful no oh wait the melon the the, this print on my body I don't, but this is the melon stretch. It's the um, stretch laces. That we have, yes. If you haven't got made those little stretch laces from that webcast, you guys, <laughs> I'm telling you, they are wonderful for, for summer going into fall. Just because so many of our little summer dresses, you know, they're great, they're cool, but sometimes when you go in for lunch or when you go into anywhere, it's so cold because the air conditioner is at least down here. They're running so fast and furious that it's freezing when you go inside anywhere. So I've always got a little jacket that I've got with me, and I don't mean jacket, I mean these little sweater things. They're just perfect to throw on over whatever. And just, you know, I've got a white one, a black one, and then do a few colors and you'll really have a nice set. But that stretch lace is great for doing that. All right, so your 4th of July this weekend, we've got a trivia question. Our trivia question's being put up right now. Um, hopefully somebody will win. We give away $50 in Silhouette Pattern product. I'm sure you can find something to spend $50 on, but it is 4th of July, so I think for a lot of us, we get a long weekend, which means we get to sew. That's what it means in my house. I get to sew. Um, and I have, a, I have a few projects I'm actually working on, but anyway. All right, so do we have it? Okay, so here's the bonus question. Um, and you can just type in the answer. Which decade did the shirt dress become popularized? We have a winner. That was not hard enough trivia question. See, sometimes we make them really hard. Sometimes we didn't like our soccer question last time, so we decided to go easy on you this time. The USA. <laughs> Uh, won that time, but they've lost several times since. I think we all know that by now. But anyway, and so who won? Denise. Hi, Denise. Good girl. Congratulations. Your um, coupon code is going to be sent to you in your box, so in your chat box. So if you'll look for that, then you'll have that code. And just apply that code when you're ordering. Today's the last day to get the Capri pant, which is 3009 because tomorrow is July. I can't believe the first half of 2014 is almost history. Our pattern of the month for July, now I've mentioned it, I'll say it again, is the wrap dress 4019, Diane's wrap dress. That was Diane von Furstenberg, obviously, is who I copied that off of. Um, and we're going to do some variations of that also next time, two weeks from now. Also, we're going to do handicap dressing. I think all of us know someone in our lives who deals with limited ability to dress themselves, either they're in a wheelchair, either they're sitting, they can't fasten the back of them. So we're going to talk about ideas of making clothing that is extremely functional f if you have limited access to completely dressing yourself. It's a subject that I've been working on for a while and there's some really great ideas. Any of you, if you have great ideas of things you've done, let us know. I think for many, many of us, our parents are aging, some of our children are ill, um, friends, neighbors, whatever. We're, we're all helping somebody, it seems like, who's limited. So feel free to email your ideas. But anyway, thanks so much for being here tonight. Anything else? Great, ladies. Thanks. And we will see you in two weeks, which I don't know the date, but we'll put it up. All right. <laughs> Happy 4th. Bye-bye.